take you through uh, with regards to what's happening with Princess uh, and uh, the destinations that we're actually uh, going to start travelling to over the 2013 season. So without further ado, I will kick off. Okay, so discover what it means to escape completely. Now, the Princess uh, brand guides are basically uh, escape completely um, throughout their product globally. Um, we have 17 ships in our fleet, and uh, here in Australia, we've got three uh, wonderful ships that are all 77,000 tonnes, and uh, they fit quite well uh, in our market down here in Australia and have done for some time. Uh, the great thing about these uh, vessels is that they can actually get under the Harbour Bridge and uh, we've got no limitations with uh, you know, the port facility in at uh, Circular Quay there. Okay, so some of the slides I'll uh, talk to a little bit more in depth than others, but uh, I guess the big thing with Princess is, in my mind, it's a, it's a four, four and a half star product. Um, the reason that I say it's a four to four and a half star product is depending on the ship, some of our ships uh, were built in the, uh, the mid-90s and some of them have been built in the, uh, the late 2000s. So, um, again, in that, uh, that situation, you're going to have some ships that uh, are a little bit older than the others. But uh, all in all, it's the same uh, quality of product throughout the fleet. A Princess Cruise is a perfect for Australians with the time to fully enjoy life. Now, Princess... Uh, tends to do longer uh, duration type voyages uh, and they range anywhere from two nights to 104 nights in length. Um, the majority of times uh, with Princess we are going uh, into voyages that are longer than 12 nights in duration. Um, they are locally based here uh, with our local ships and uh, they are permanently based down here year round sailing either from Sydney, Melbourne, Brisbane or Fremantle. Now, the local ships that we have here in Australia, we have the Sun Princess, the Dawn Princess, and the Sea Princess. Um, they are sister ships, so they are, they are all 77,000 tonnes. And again, they are they're basically identical throughout um, with a couple of minor changes here and there um, uh, on each uh, individual ship. Um, the other uh, ship that we have coming down here into Australia, which I'm sure for those of you in Sydney or around Australia, uh, have, might have seen is Diamond Princess. Now, Diamond Princess is uh, one of our larger ships. Um, compared to the local ships that are based here, like Sun, Dawn and Sea Princess at 77,000 tonnes, Diamond Princess is 116,000 tonnes. Uh, she is a 2004 build, um, and as you can see from this shot, uh, she has a hell of a lot of balcony cabins uh, and suites as well, and mini suites on board. Um, she is a large ship. Um, she's around about three football fields long, and uh, she's got some fantastic amenities um, on board as well. Um, Diamond Princess uh, is normally based up in Alaska, doing the uh, the round trip uh, from Seattle, but she does come down to Australia over the summer period. On her way down, she will uh, go up through uh, Asia and do a couple of cruises in and around Asia, and then she'll uh, trek her way down. Uh, into uh, Australian waters and do quite a number of cruises in and out of Australia from Sydney to New Zealand backwards and forwards one way. So you would, uh, you know, cruise from Sydney over to Auckland, taking in around the south of uh, New Zealand and up through uh, a heap of New Zealand ports. You would then get off in Auckland and fly home or vice versa. You could fly to Auckland, jump on in Auckland and then sail back to Sydney again. Um, and then once we've finished uh, her season, here in Australia at the end of summer, they will then uh, send her back up uh, to the Asia area and then she will continue back across to, uh, to America again and do uh, Alaska. Now I just wanted to take you through a couple of the, uh, the princess cabins. This is our, uh, our normal uh, standard interior cabin on board. Uh, as you can see, it's a uh, it can, but well, it's set up as a twin bedding at the moment, but you can have this set up as a, uh, as a queen bed. And uh, again, you've got your own, uh, your own bathroom uh, as well. So we're now going to a, uh, a standard ocean view cabin. 
So the main difference here is the, uh, the picture window that you can see in the background. Um, other than that, uh, this is just a different shot of exactly what a, uh, an interior cabin would look like um, as well because the interior and the ocean view cabins are identical in size. It's just whether you've got a, uh, a window or, uh, or not a window. We've also got our ocean view cabins with balconies and the one point that I'd like to make with this is um, the local ships here in Australia, uh, each individual ship has got over 400 balcony cabins on board. So there is a lot of balcony uh, choice down here in Australia with the, uh, the three princess ships based here. Um, so this is a standard ocean view balcony cabin and then of course we take that next step again and go up into uh, our suite. Uh, we also do have mini suites as well uh, and they're very, very similar uh, to this as well. Now we have uh, dining options um, to suit any mood. Um, our local product here in Australia have actually only got the traditional dining option. So what we mean by the traditional dining option is your first or second choice dining. So either 6 o'clock or 8 o'clock and you can choose whether you uh, dine with two, four, six, eight or ten passengers um, at that same time uh, each night. The, uh, the other options which we have as well, because uh, we have some other specialty dining options, uh, the Sterling Steakhouse and of course the ultimate balcony dining experience as well. So there is a cover charge uh, with these two options that you can see on the screen. Uh, and the Sterling Steakhouse is around about $25 um, Australian here in, uh, here in Australia and that includes your entree, your main and your dessert. And uh, let me tell you, whenever I travel on Princess, I always go here at least once because the uh, food is magnificent and uh, you know, that even includes a 600 gram ribeye steak that melts like butter. So um, yeah, it's a pretty good experience. And then the ultimate balcony dining experience that's if you do have your own private balcony. So if you choose to take a uh, balcony cabin or a mini suite or a suite, you can choose to have the ultimate balcony dining where the waiters will come down. They'll actually dress your uh, balcony up um, with uh, you know, a really nice table and you know, great chairs. And then you'll actually have full waiter service in your own cabin, um, course by course, um, as your meal uh, comes through. Okay. So um, on top of all, all that uh, that I've just spoken about food-wise, we also have our casual and informal um, options as well. So we have the, uh, the pizzeria, um, we have the 24-hour buffet, and we also have our room service available as well. So this is uh, on board. It's at no extra cost. Um, so the only cost that you will uh, you know, have involved is if you choose to go to the specialty dining options, um, everything else is included in your, uh, your one low fare. So um, again, we've got a couple of other options there. Now, a cruising experience filled with wonderful possibilities. And again, that, that really is uh, what Princess is all about. You know, it's a, uh, it's a holiday that comes, um, you know, in some cases once in a lifetime, but uh, those experiences that you're going to receive uh, on the journey with Princess is, are actually absolutely amazing. So um, again, that's, that's part of our branding as well. Now, some of the features on board uh, our local ships as well as some of our international ships. Um, well, the first thing to kick off with is obviously the, the big screen um, TVs. Uh, again, we have uh, two movies during the day and we'll normally do two movies in the evening. Um, a lot of people say, you know, how can you play a movie during the day when you're in the open uh, daylight? But the actual movie screen is set up so that uh, it is you know, picture clear quality during the day as well as the evening. Um, and again, the same with the sound. The reason why we only do two movies during the day and two movies in the evening is purely because the clientele that we have on board, we know that they, uh, they want to have a bit of relaxation as well. So we don't want to be uh, you know, blaring all these uh, movies all throughout the day so that people can't just sit around the pool, relax and read a book at the same time. So. We've got a couple of options there, um, two in the day and two in the evening, like I said. Again, you know, if there's something big happening that we, uh, we think that our passengers are going to enjoy, whether it's uh, rock concerts or, you know, it might be some sort of sporting event, um, again, if our, our clients are, are going to be interested in this, we will also feature them up on the big screen as well. Uh, you know, I know we had that with the State of Origin just recently 
and uh, we had you know Queensland on one side and New South Wales on the other, and uh, there was quite a big fierce rivalry going on up on the pool deck there. Now, one of the other features with our, our local ships and again our international ships um, is the sanctuary. Now, the sanctuary is quite a small area on board. As you can see, it's got very nice lounge space. Um, you've got like a little uh, uh, dip pool, and um, again, in this area. It's, uh, it's got its own serenity stewards. Um, it's an adult only area. And again, we have healthy beverages and wellness cuisine that comes up into this area as well. Now, there is a cover charge. Uh, it's $15 for a half day, $30 for a full day. The whole reason why we have a uh, cover charge in this area is because it is rather small. Um, you know, there's 2,000 passengers on board our ships here in Australia. And I reckon you'd be stretched to have 50 people in this area uh, in the sanctuary. So. That's why we've put a cover charge on, just to try and uh, limit the amount of passengers trying to get up into this area and try and keep it uh, a secluded area. Okay, so our activities by day, uh, you know, there's a whole range of activities you can choose from uh, on board any of our princess ships, whether it's here in Australia or internationally. Um, again, the, the shot that you can see on screen is part of our spa area. Uh, our Lotus Spa. Um, again, we've got fantastic gym facilities. We've also got uh, great sort of aerobics rooms. And, you know, on top of that, you could just uh, get a massage. Uh, we've got hot rock treatments. We've got deep uh, muscle uh, massages. We also have yoga classes, Pilates. Um, you name it, we've pretty much got it up in this area when it comes to, uh, to wellness and uh, looking after yourself. So, again, like I said, Fantastic gyms uh, on our, our three local ships as well as the international ships with uh, brand new state-of-the-art equipment. And of course, we've got lots of different uh, classes you can do in the aerobics room, whether it's boot camp, yoga, Pilates, the list goes on. Uh, on top of that, we've also got fully qualified um, personal trainers on board as well, uh, which make a big difference um, as well. Now again, just continuing on with uh, some of the other activities uh, at sea. Um, again, we have lots and lots of art on board our ships and really, really good art as well. Um, we run our own art auctions. Uh, and again, if you do bid on any of the art uh, or purchase any of the art, we have uh, our professionals on board that uh, to wrap it all up um, professionally and send it to you so that there's no damage um, of your art when you're trying to uh, travel home. So. Again, you don't have to worry about carrying it on the aircraft or anything like that. We will have it uh, professionally uh, packaged up and sent to your uh, your address, so there's no issues there. Uh, on top of that, uh, one of the other activities is we also have our, our virtual golf simulators on board our princess ships. So again, for those golf enthusiasts out there like myself, um, you can get into uh, the golf simulator play at, uh, I think it's now 24 of the world's best golf courses um, on the uh, the big screen in the uh, golf simulator. And uh, again, you can uh, you know go everything from driving uh, and playing a full round of golf uh, in the simulator. So it's uh, another really cool activity. Like I said, there's lots on offer. So again, continuing on uh, during the day, we also have our uh, scholarship at sea. Uh, program and we also have obviously uh, involved in that is the cooking, computers, scrapbooking, ceramics, photography and uh, and a whole range more uh, to continue on but uh, again this is probably one of my favourites is uh, the cooking classes. I'm not a real good cook my, myself but um, I like to have a go here and pretend that I am a uh, you know, Michelin star chef or something like that. Now we start moving into the evening. Now the evenings on Princess really do come alive. Um, whether again it's on the local products here in Australia or internationally, um, you know you could be entertained by lavish cabaret and Vegas style musical productions. You can listen to live bands, and we also have a number of guest artists that fly in and fly out and travel on board our Princess ships um, throughout the uh, the cruise uh, time. Uh, again. There's a whole range of different bars and lounges as well that you can just sit back, relax and do nothing at all or you can take in one of these fantastic shows uh, on board. Again, continuing on through the night, uh, all of our ships have our uh, grand casinos on board uh, and again, in most of the bars we have uh, 
you know, dance floors with either a live band or a piano playing. And again, you can choose to uh, either dance the night away or uh, just sit back, relax and listen to some tunes while having a uh, quiet drink amongst friends. Now, Princess Cruises, although we do quite longer voyages, uh, and, you know, I'm talking, you know, the 104 nights, the 75 nights and so forth, we actually do have fantastic facilities for, uh, for families to come on board as well. So, again, for the families that are looking for a bit more of a premium-styled product um, to travel, uh, whether it's out to the South Pacific, New Zealand, around Australia, um, we have great kids' facilities uh, on board all of our products, whether it's here in Australia and internationally as well. Um, as you can see, we have pelicans, which age from three to seven-year-olds, shock waves, eight to 12-year-olds, and then our uh, remix, 13 to 17. So there's so many ways to escape completely. Like I said, uh, the best way to describe Princess, well, the way that I describe Princess, is if there's ocean there, we go there. There's not a lot of places that princes don't go in and out of, or even for a, uh, a period of time through the year. Um, they will normally get in and out of certain areas, um, you know, whether it's for the best season or uh, the best time to be travelling in that area. We normally do get there. Over 350 of the most exciting destinations on Earth. Um, now, this has just changed the unparalleled fleet. We actually have 17 ships in our fleet now. Um, over 120 unique itineraries, and like I said, our cruises range from two nights right through into 104 nights. And I'll show you some of those itineraries uh, in the next couple of slides. So you've just got to remember the first couple of uh, slides you're going to see, it's all based out of Australia. So no flying needed. Um, you can cruise out of Sydney and return to Sydney on the full circumnavigations. Or if you don't have 75 nights to travel um, the whole way around, you can do a sector, uh, what we call a sector or, or partial voyage. Um, so that might be from Sydney up into Beijing, or you might fly into Beijing and do Beijing back to Sydney, or you might even just come from San Francisco back to Sydney. The choice is entirely up to you. Um, now, this is our main world voyage uh, for the, the 75 night, the Circle Pacific. Um, I do believe that there is going to be some other breakups of this cruise as well along the way. Um, you know, those will probably be Sydney to Hong Kong um, and so forth. But uh, at the moment, we are showcasing the 75-night uh, the cruise leaving on the 26th of April 2013. So the big cruise that, uh, that we have on offer here out of Australia, obviously... You know, we have a lot of uh, cruisers coming into Australia doing world cruises, whether they're coming from Southampton and doing the, uh, the full round trip from Southampton or coming from the States. But uh, the great thing with Princess being permanently based down here in Australia as well is we now have our choice of world cruise. So, again, no need to fly. Uh, 104 nights round trip, taking in some of the world's best destinations uh, on, the, on the journey itself. So leaving from Sydney heading on up into uh, Dubai as the next major port. Um, as you can see, you're stopping off at Singapore and uh, Malaysia and Langkawi on the way through. Um, heading on up through the Suez Canal into the Mediterranean um, and then up into England and then from England across the uh, transatlantic into New York, down through the Panama Canal, up into Los Angeles and then obviously coming back through the, uh, the South Pacific and Hawaii and Tahiti on the way back through again. Um, again, like I said in the previous slide, this one has been sected or broken up as well. So all the big red stars you can see are the, the start and finish points. Um, and again, there is talks of this one being broken up slightly more as well. So um, if you can't do the full round voyage but you like a certain section of this, um, keep your eyes out with uh, Cruise Guru because uh, they will be on top of this, uh, no doubt. So the other um, world cruise, as you can see, we're, uh, we're loving our world cruises in 2013. Um, the next world cruise which we have on offer, um, this one will be on Dawn Princess. It's 90 nights, and it's what I like to call the boomerang. So um, it leaves from Sydney, it goes up through uh, uh, Asia and, uh, and India, and then up into the Suez Canal, into the Mediterranean. It stops, its halfway point is Venice, and then it actually comes along the same sort of route 
but stopping off at some different ports on the way back through, back down through the sewers, and then down on into Australia again. Um, the other option that uh, quite a few people that I know have been taking is from that previous slide with the full round world, they are doing a halfway trip, so going up into uh, to London, and they're having about two and a half to three months uh, wait, and then jumping back on board this cruise and coming back on down into Australia again um, uh, without having to fly. So spending quite a bit of time up in uh, London and the UK and Europe, and then being able to cruise back down again uh, to their homeland. Now I'm sure for a lot of you that uh, have been following Princess for the last few years, or if anyone is new to Princess, um, we have got a lot of New Zealand cruises happening. Um, again, you can see there that we've got Sydney, Melbourne, and Brisbane itineraries, um, and uh, you know we do this throughout the entire year. Um, it's one of our biggest uh, biggest itineraries, and uh, it seems to be one of our most popular, and that's why we continue to uh, to bring New Zealand out every single year. Um, as you can see, round trip, um, Sydney through, well, if we base it on Sydney for instance, down through the Fiordland National Park, up into Dunedin, into Christchurch, Wellington, Napier, uh, into Auckland and Tauranga, um, and also stopping through the uh, Bay of Islands without uh, continuing on into uh, Sydney again. Now the other option we have of this is, like I was saying before, Diamond Princess, uh, the big ship that comes down for the uh, the summer season, uh, it'll actually do a very similar itinerary, but without having that trip back to Australia again. It'll uh, stop in Auckland and then turn around and do the reverse leg again, like you can see on this uh, diagram. Now, again, something else that uh, Princess have been, you know, I think famous for is their round Australia uh, itinerary. So, again, something a little bit different this time round. Um, just to mix it up a little bit. This is the full circumnavigation of Australia. Um, you will notice though that this one doesn't actually take in uh, Broome. It actually goes uh, up via Bali and, uh, and then comes down into Fremantle. Again, there are lots of, lots of options uh, to do here, all the big start points, the start and finish points. Um, again, one of the other itineraries which we have, and I haven't brought it along with me today, is the half round Australia voyages. So leaving from Sydney going out for the, uh, the top end, the half round uh, Australia voyages will take in Broome in most cases. There are still a couple that take in Bali, but the majority of them do, do take on, uh, on Broome on the way through. And again, you can do the reverse leg of that as well, so going Fremantle back to Sydney um, as a one way. Now, um, some itineraries that have been out for a little bit, but um, we're focusing a lot more on is out of Fremantle. So, Again, we've got some one-way cruises going up uh, from Fremantle into Asia, um, and then we've also got some round-trip cruises as well. So as you can see, 11 nights right up to 25 nights, and uh, four ports, six ports, six ports, and then 10 ports um, mm -hmm. available on this, uh, this leg. Uh, I, I guess my favourite one out of this is the 25-nighter. Uh, the it's a round-trip, but you're doing a bit of the, uh, the east and west side um, of that itinerary. Now just remember too, uh, for those of you who have been uh, you know, looking cruise guru, um, most of the itineraries that we are, we are showcasing will have uh, you know, onboard credits as well uh, with this one. Now we're going to go into some of the um, international uh, product. Um, again, Northern Europe and around those areas, uh, we, we've got a whole range of uh, products out uh, in the Mediterranean and, uh, and Europe. Uh, like I said before, if there's ocean there, we pretty much go there. Um, these are our Northern Europe itineraries. And again, I've just picked a, uh, a selection of uh, what is most popular from Australia. Um, there are a heap more available uh, you know, through Cruise Guru if, uh, if there's nothing here that you see that you like. We've then got our Mediterranean and Greek islands itineraries. Again, you can see the ships coming right into town. So you've got the Mediterranean Explorer, you've got the Greek Isles, and the European Explorer as well.
All right. Now, we've also got the, uh, the Mediterranean and Holy Land and, of course, Egypt involved on our itineraries as well. So, again, some of them are round trip, but you will see that the majority of our cruises are one-way legs. Um, okay. We're now going into uh, probably one of my favourite destinations. Um, I have done quite a bit of cruising, but I would have to say that... Uh, Alaska and Canada is probably my uh, my baby at the moment. Um, I just did Canada and Alaska uh, two years ago, and uh, as you can see, uh, Princess Cruises at the moment is the number one cruise operator and land tour operator in Alaska. Um, I think this uh, this image definitely uh, goes to show what our products are like. You've got a, a picture of uh, one of our ships, the Coal Princess, and uh, you've also got the uh, the showcase of you know, up in the heart of Alaska that we do have our own princess train carriages. Um, we also have our own princess lodges in these areas, which I'll show you as well. And we also have our own princess coaches up in here. And I guess the, the great thing about having all those on offer is the fact that you know exactly what you're getting from day dot. So the transition from the ship to the train is going to be the same sort of service. And then the train to the coach, same service. And then, of course, the coaches into the lodges, you're going to get that same service. So um, that's one thing that I absolutely loved about Princess was you didn't know what you were going to get next. You knew exactly what you were going to get. Now, Princess Cruises, um, we've got a couple of itineraries for Alaska. Uh, the one-way legs going from Vancouver up into uh, Whittier. And then, of course, that's where you will start taking on the land content if you choose to do that. You might only choose to uh, do the one-way leg up into Whittier and then fly back somewhere else. But... We do have the option of the one way, taking in Ketchikan, Juneau, Skagway, obviously Glacier Bay. This one you also do take in uh, College Fjord, and then you go up into uh, into Withia. These are the uh, the itineraries that you will obviously start or finish with your cruise before either going on and doing your land content or doing your land content first and then cruising back down to uh, Vancouver. The other option we've got, like I was talking about, was the inside passage. So, again, uh, Diamond Princess, which I was talking about before. Um, Diamond Princess, outside of her Australian season, uh, is up in Alaska. Or if it's not Diamond Princess, it could be her sister ship, Sapphire Princess, which uh, does the same sort of itinerary. So, again, the round trip, leaving from Seattle, you'll go up into Victoria. Again, the same sort of thing, Ketchikan, uh, Juneau, Skagway. And you'll also do um, Tracy Arm as well, um, which is where all the glaciers all are situated. Um, again, we've also got a 14-night uh, voyage to, to Valdez and Kodiak. Um, and we've also got like a, a voyage from Sa uh, San Francisco as well, um, if you didn't want to do the Seattle uh, itinerary. Okay, so this is a, um, a great little picture of not only the land content side of things that you can see on the bottom left there, but it's also got a great image of what our, uh, our princess lodges look like. So again, um, direct to the wilderness, you've got the princess rail service, uh, like I said, so our own train carriages on the Alaskan Express. Um, again, when you do the Alaskan Express, uh, that is probably one of the best spots to see wildlife. Um, the cruise and uh, land tour we did, we saw uh, you know grizzly bears, uh, I guess you'd, or I'll call it bear paddling across uh, river systems uh, with their cubs. And uh, again, lots of moose, caribou, uh, and plenty of bird life as well. Um, the itineraries that we have are three, five, and seven night land tours, and they come either standard or a deluxe package, um, depending on which way you want to go. Um, again, the, the Princess Lodges are fantastic. They're in great locations very close to um, uh, towns in most cases. Otherwise, you know, some of the princess lodges are, are you know, really out in the middle of nowhere and you really get that wildlife sort of uh, feel when you're out there looking out over you know, snow-capped uh, mountains and uh, having wildlife everywhere. In fact, I've done lots of Canada and I've done uh, you know, a lot of America and stuff and, and Alaska was definitely the most... Uh, well, I've, I've never seen so much wildlife as what I saw up in, uh, in Alaska. I think the trip that we did, we had uh, you know, over 12 grizzly bears we saw on the uh, duration that we, uh, we did. So uh, it's pretty spectacular. 
Um, so some of the other options, obviously, when it comes to train and coach is uh, Calgary, uh, going up through Lake Louise, Jasper, Kamloops, and Vancouver. And then you can see there uh, the normal sort of best of the Rockies and Alaska uh, trips following on with a, a cruise in between. Oh, there is one thing I just wanted to make note of uh, too with Princess. Uh, you'll see it now. Um, the real benefit with Princess and traveling Princess through Alaska is the fact that when you do the one-way leg and you're doing the land content, the uh, the ship literally pulls up into Whittier. A lot of the other uh, cruise lines actually have to travel further up the uh, canal um, into Seaward, and then they have to get a coach back to the train before they even start their journey. As you can see with Princess here, you literally pull up alongside and you've probably got a 50 to 100 metre walk across to the actual train where you aboard, be in luxury again and uh, continue on with your journey. So again, look, it's, uh, it's a fantastic product uh, in Alaska and uh, as, as I said before, we are currently the number one uh, cruise or land tour operator in this region. The other real uh, good thing that Princess does, especially with Alaska, is... Uh, you know, it can be quite cold in Alaska, so uh, obviously you're going to pack lots of uh, warm clothes. Uh, when you actually get off your, your ship itself, uh, or the night before, they will actually put a couple of different tags on your uh, in your room. So if you are doing the land content, they will have a uh, two tags. One says, stay with me, and one says, meet me at the end. Now, what they basically do with that is... If there is clothing that you don't want to be lugging around um, to your lodges or you know to the uh, throughout the coaching or anything like that, you can actually choose to meet with me, and Princess will actually get that luggage to the last destination before you continue your travels um, after your your land content. Um, and again, they will make sure that the the bag that you have stay with me travels with you the whole way through your land content as well. So. Uh, I found that very, very useful um, considering I was doing quite a longer trip after my Alaskan trip throughout uh, the states where it was actually quite warm. So when it comes to uh, shore excursions, uh, we've got lots of, uh, of shore excursions on, uh, on offer. Um, again, with Alaska, we've got the Taste of Alaska Buffet. We've got uh, signature Alaskan cuisine, so that might be, you know, king crab. Um, it might be a uh, true Alaskan salmon, um, halibut. You know, the, the list goes on. Um, and again, you get that real Alaskan sort of experience uh, up in these regions. Um, we have uh, national park rangers on board uh, all the time on the ships, uh, giving commentary. You know, if there's whales that are coming up, they'll allow or let you know uh, on the the ship's comms, where they are, what side to run to and see them. And um, again, even with our, uh, our princess coaches and stuff, as you're driving along, our princess coach staff uh, are really, really um, full of knowledge and uh, can either answer your questions that you've got or they'll tell you different things that you're coming up to uh, as you're arriving to them as well. So uh, a great, great service. So, folks, uh, that's the end of my presentation. Um, I just put this uh, this last shot of uh, Glacier Bay there. Um, this is the sort of stuff you will be seeing when you're uh, travelling on uh, Princess Cruises up into the uh, Alaskan region. And, um, again, if there are any questions or if you want to know any more information, please see the uh, or speak to the cruise guru guys um, and, uh, and feel free to, uh, to ask them any questions. Or if you've got any questions now, please feel free to uh, type your questions onto the webinar and uh, I'll be more than happy to uh, either try and answer your questions or if I don't know, I'll uh, respond back to uh, Leighton and, uh, and get his team to, uh, to look into it for me. Okay, Ledger, thank you so much for um, joining us this afternoon um, on what this um, great princess presentation. I'd like to thank Lance for joining us and um, giving some inside knowledge into some of the great destinations that Princess actually go to. Um, as Lance said, we'll open up the forum. Um, if anybody has any questions, at the bottom um, of your screen, you should see a questions box. So if you want to type any questions in there to us, um, we'll be more than happy to answer them um, and, or otherwise get back to you. Um, just to let you know that our team are available at the moment if you do want to give us a call and ask for some quotes. 
Um, our phone number is very easy. It's 131303. Otherwise, our website does actually have all live pricing and availability on every single Princess Cruise. So you can actually use our website, look at the availability, look at the actual cruises, um, and also you can actually choose your cabin number as well and lock it in there and then on the spot. So it's a great way, um, and it's a great tool to use as well. Um, we do also have, just to let you know, for those who are still on the line, um, we, I'll let you in on a little secret. Next week we have a great princess sale coming up. Um, as well as some other brands as well. So do keep your eye out for that. Um, if you aren't on our newsletter list, please do make sure you do sign up. Um, we do have some great offers and exclusive deals only for Cruise Guru clients and exclusive discounts only through Cruise Guru. We do have a question here. Um, is anything on South America cruises for Princess? Lance, how about what do you reckon? Yeah, look, we do have um, South America. In fact, South America is a destination that... Uh, seems to be growing by popular demand very, very fastly. Um, I believe we're going to have uh, three South American cruises in 2013. Um, that's all I've seen so far. However, the new brochure um, for South America and also our local brochures are actually coming out uh, in the next month or so. So we will have a lot more detail on that, but I do believe there's at least three South America cruises um, in 2013. Another question um, that we do have that's just come into Princess Cruises cater for younger clientele. Um, I definitely recommend that Princess is a great product uh, for Prince, uh, for younger clientele. Don't you agree, Lance? Yeah, look, Princess is um, is definitely you know caters for the younger clientele. I would say honestly, um, and this is uh, you know how we're seeing at the moment here in Australia, the um, the Princess product is uh, is probably more for the, um, the 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 clients that are after a premium cruise product. Um, obviously, the longer cruises, you're going to have an older demographic on board, but definitely the shorter cruises or the um, you know the 12 nights or less um, will definitely have a younger crowd on board. When I say younger, it's more couples, um, young families, uh, and that and those sorts of likes. Um, when it comes to the international side of things, Princess is definitely uh, completely different to what it's like down here at Australia. Um, their age group is is you know very very mixed. Um, you know, range from young families right up to your, your oldies as well, but um, everything in between as well. Um, we've also received another fantastic question um, regarding um, going to colder climates such as Alaska and South America. Do you also need to bring with you your cold weather gear? What would you recommend, Lance, for people that are going to these destinations such as this? With Alaska, um, again, it depends on the season. Uh, when I was up in Alaska, Look, it was uh, was quite chilly. Um, in saying that, though, I don't really feel the cold, and I would I would be honest in saying that at the time I went, which was uh, late August, which is towards the very end of the season, uh, I was in uh, shorts and a t-shirt for ninety percent of the time. However, especially up in Glacier Bay and around where uh, there is snow, um, it, it does get very cold. I know in the earlier part of the season, um, Alaska is is very very chilly. So um, yes, definitely. Uh, if you're one of those people that feels the cold or doesn't like you know, being cold, definitely take your uh, your winter gear along. Fantastic. Thanks for that. We do, um, we all have to wrap this up now. Uh, we do have one or two questions left um, to answer, and which one which has just come in, which is um, someone must have wedding bells on their mind. Um, do Princess Cruises do weddings on board, Lance? Yes, we're, um, we're in the midst of uh, putting our wedding program together. Um, again, that would be something that uh, I would contact the uh, the cruise guru guys, uh, have a chat with them. They will go through to our uh, our head office and um, liaise with our our groups team uh, who look after our wedding packages and uh, and be able to come back to you with regards to pricing, what we can and can't offer uh, with regards to our princess product. Great. So fan some fantastic questions there today, guys. Um, thank you so much for joining us um, on this great presentation on Princess Cruises. As I said before, if you do have any other questions um, or want to know about other um, itineraries that Princess are doing, please feel free to contact us on 131303. Um, and we did have just one last question, just quickly. Um, do you have to pay for gratuities while on board, Princess? So, Princess, in fact, I'll, I'll take this a step further. Um, any of our local products being p and Australia, Carnival Australia or Princess Australia, so the three ships based down here in Australia, you no longer need to pay gratuities on board. So we have completely wiped that out of our program. Uh, the international Princess ships, you still will.
but any of the three princess ships here in Australia, you no longer pay gratuities or tipping uh, going forward. Great. And that, that will wrap it up for today, ladies and gentlemen. So I do thank you for attending. Um, and as I said, don't forget, give us a call if you have any other questions. Otherwise, do make sure you have your sign up to our newsletter um, or visit cruiseguru.com.au. Thank you very much.